our harvest as much as we possibly can. So we're still true to all of our ethics and beliefs, but we're now just focusing on probiotics. So when I say probiotics, most of you think your gut, most people think you take a probiotic every day and then you can go on antibiotics and you'll be fine. And if you take an antibiotic, you just eat some yogurt and you'll be fine. And that's not the case. So, the thinking is changing. We used to, it used to be very much like your child dropped its dummy on the floor and you sterilised it and you, like your child can't tell people death alarm and you hand sanitise. And the thinking is changing. It's slow, especially in like South Africa. But the thinking is now changing to you don't need to sterilise, you don't need to sanitise. You, we want those bugs on our skin and in our bodies. And what has been discovered sort of like about 10 years ago now is the your human, what they're calling your microbiome. And what that is, is basically your entire body is an ecosystem. So, your entire body is covered in microbes. If you had to weigh your microbial DNA versus your human DNA, your microbial DNA would be 54%, your microbial, your, uh, sorry, your microbial DNA would be 54%, your human DNA would only be 46%. So essentially more bugs and bacteria than we are human. And what we are trying to do at ACE is promote a healthy ecosystem on your skin, enable the growth of the microbes, the good bugs. So we always say microbes, but essentially it is bacteria, but when you say bacteria, people are like, oh, bacteria. Um, but we are trying to promote the growth of the good, good microbes on your skin and create a surface or an ecosystem on your skin that favors the growth of the good microbes. By doing that, your skin is healthy, so your skin can just be skin. Um, your skin, if your skin's constantly fighting inflammation or fighting or, or like, a, like an acne overgrowth or um, yeah, inflammation, if your skin's constantly having to work, it's causing aging. The more your skin works, the more it ages. That's why we've got, we all have like wrinkles on our, like our brown lines and our crow's feet because when you smile and frown, those cells have worked more than like the cells on your cheeks, for instance. So, by creating a healthy ecosystem on your skin, your skin can essentially just be skin, which Dion has been recognised for her knowledge, professionalism and well-established <coughs> core client portfolio. Techno's worked in the hospitality, food, tourism, education, health and entertainment industries. She's going to talk to us about what is the weather forecast, on what PRs look for in bloggers and changing the changing world of communication. She has a wealth of knowledge, so please take notes if you can. Morning everybody. I also don't have a, a loud voice, so just put your hand up if you can't hear me. Um, excuse my notes, but when I was given this little project to do by Siobhan, I thought, okay, I'm going to do a little bit of homework, so bear with me as I go through it all. Um, just a little bit about, about who I am and where we come from. But my career started in the year that you, Yahoo was launched, the internet was launched. That was the very first time I started working. Does anybody know what year that was when the internet was launched? I'm not sure if I want to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? 98. 98. No. Really? 1991. Okay, so that's the year that the internet was actually launched. I also, my first job as a computer was so big. You know those screens with the, like the extended back and the huge keyboard separate and that tower? I think I had about that much space on my desk to work with because the computer took up so much space. It used to take us probably an hour to dial up to the internet. You know you had that dial up to it? marketer's dream. Any new product on the market, I have to try it, okay? I went through those box phones, the very first yeah. ones that you used to carry into your car. It was so cool because you could pick up the phone in the car. <laughs> then we went to the banana phone, which was that long phone. The flip phone, so <laughs> put out the area. The flip phone, all of those kind of things. We then went to laptops, 
So we've now got those thin laptops. Now we can do everything on a telephone that sits in our back pocket. So it's been quite a, a journey for us through technology, and not only through technology, but also through communication, and how we've had to adapt as humans in the way that we communicate. Again, a little bit more history on myself. I am not trained in communications. I'm not public relations trained. I'm not marketing trained. I'm a hotel manager. Okay? I was trained in hospitality. My husband was trained in hospitality. We were working in a game lodge right out in the middle of the bush when we met. We worked in game lodges for about six years and then we moved down to we moved into head office where we did sales and marketing and my journey eventually took me to looking after 42 hotels, the marketing of hotels. By the time my daughter was two years old, she had done 48 flights. Okay? Wow. That's how much we used to travel together. When my son surprised us and decided to come along, we realized it's not something that we can carry on doing. So I decided I'm going to resign, leave and leave the corporate world and focus on being a mum. I was very lucky in that Three Cities, I don't know if anybody remembers Three Cities Hotel Group, mm -hmm. they said to us, you know what, we're looking for somebody to do PR, won't you take on the, the position as your own business and do it. So I said, yes, sure, no problem. First of July 2007 came, opened the office door, I had nothing. I didn't have a name, I had no knowledge of PR, I didn't know anything, okay? So it's been a huge learning curve and I'm learning something new every single day as I go along. And I'm just so glad my son did come along because we've got a fantastic company that we're running now. A beautiful son, okay, who keeps us very busy, but we get the opportunity of working together. Um, my passion is branding, marketing, promotions. We have a team of six people. We do work from an office, but we also have a copywriter that's in Cape Town, so we're used to working with the distance working. We work with bloggers all the time, okay? And when Siobhan asked me to please talk on this topic, I said, oh, I don't know if I can really stand in front of bloggers and tell you exactly what PRs are really saying. <laughs> so I decided, you know what, I'm not going to be the only one that sits here and tells you what's happening. Okay, the one thing you can know about me is um, straightforward. Okay, <laughs> tell it as it is. So what I did was I took some time and I spoke to the PR companies. I spoke to the ones in Durban, I spoke to the ones in Johannesburg, and I spoke to the ones in Cape Town. Some of the bigger PR companies and some of the smaller PR companies. And what was really interesting to me after I'd done all of this research was the common thread that we all had. And those are the things that we're going to talk about. Doing all of this, I just I didn't want to have a talk about what what do bloggers, you know, how do bloggers and PR people work together? Because there's so much more to blogging and to PR industry than that. And that is why we named the talk, what is the weather forecast? Because we don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what the weather holds for us. Okay, so there's three key areas that we want to cover. So I'm going to put this down. This is, I've, I've slipped one of these into your goodie bags. It's our business card. It, it's a paper clip so that you can keep it on any paper that you may still use, okay? Um, and I just included it here so if you've got any questions during the week after you've had a good night's sleep and you want to ask, just phone, okay? Sorry. Okay, first, let's, let's talk from the first angle. What are PRs expecting from a relationship with a blogger? Okay. The first thing that you're expecting is to know you. Know your blog, know your Facebook page, know your Instagram. I have spent the last two days, thanks to Siobhan for sending me all those links, but going on to, I think, every single person's page and Instagram here to see who you're all about. What are you doing? What are you covering? How much fan base do you have? So I've liked all of those pages. What do we look for, okay? The biggest thing that we look for is the quality of the blog, okay? What is it that you are focusing on? What is it that you are not focusing on? We do look at your social media following, but that is not the end of it. Okay, I saw one or two people 
that had 150 followers that are sitting here, okay? Don't give up, your blog is brilliant, okay? Keep going at that, because it's not what we look at. Um, we look at your media kit, we focus a lot of our time on the previous work that you've done, okay? What is the quality of it? What is the focus of that message? How is it presented? Um, how is it complementing the brand? We do look at stats, we look at um, your audience engagement, and the biggest, biggest, biggest thing for us is the reach. What is the reach of your post? Um, the other thing is the deliverables. Okay, What are you telling us that you're going to be delivering, and have you actually been able to deliver that in the past? Once all of that is done, what you can do is get to know our brand. What do we stand for? What do we do? PR agents don't like to work in a once-off relationship. Okay, We don't like to come in, do one job, thank you very much, and leave. We prefer to work with a smaller group of bloggers and focus on them and develop relationships with them. Okay, We like to cross-pollinate cross with different brands. So if you are looking after another brand, keep in mind what another PR agency is doing and cross-pollinate those brands where and when you can. Um, don't, don't be afraid to get to know that brand that you can answer the questions that, you, that are coming from your readers. It's so often that you put a beautiful post up there, okay, and then your audience is engaging with but nobody is responding to them. And more than likely it's because the blogger doesn't know the answer. Don't feel afraid to phone us and say, just be asked this question. What's at us at 9 o'clock at night? It happens. I've got this reader, I need to get an answer to them now. That's what we're there for. Use us to help you through that, okay? But also do a little bit of your, your own work. A lot of the clients wanting to see what it is that you're posting before you post. And we understand that it's not always possible, especially with stories, now you're wanting to do it instantly, you're wanting to do post instantly. We have to take that road on to educate them a little bit more, okay? If it's a blog that's going up, you don't want to show us what it is beforehand, please, please, please do a spell check, okay? It is so often that we are having to go on and say, please change this, please change that, and make sure that you get the brand name correctly. Okay. <laughs> Please. If it has a full stop, put the full stop in. If it has a capital on the first word of letter of the word, use the capital. If it's all in caps, use the capital. Respect the brand that they have spent a lot of time and effort putting out there. Do what they have asked you to do. Worrying about how you look. 
Yeah. Do you spend chunks of your precious time wondering what Wendy thinks about how you look? No. <laughs> well, Nancy or Stacey, do you wonder, well, what if she sees me from that angle? What if I sit down, will she leave that little lump that pops out? <laughs> I have been that person, I was that person for absolute years. But I only grew to 4 foot 11, and then I grew these magnificent curves, stretch marks, hair everywhere, and I really struggled with this. My mum is the most petite little human. She wasn't ready for her nine-year-old daughter to get boobs. So she didn't, couldn't really afford a bra. <laughs> I had like safety pinned little crop tops to try and hold these bad boys in. Trying to do my sports, my pee. <laughs> <laughs> I hated these things. Like the, 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 the school shirts that would bulge open and the boys that were picking my strap. All of those things made me feel so self-conscious from a very young age. And it didn't ever go. Okay. I started to go into a, a cycle of restricting what I ate and binging, like somebody was starving because the planet was. I was binge eating, dieting, every diet going. I would try it and fail at it and feel completely worthless. I know I could see from the outside because I didn't look that odd compared to my friends, but I felt very odd inside. And it's a conversation that we weren't having. Nobody was talking about this. And now we are talking more and more, but it's difficult. And I reached my rock bottom when, I mean, I've achieved a lot. I was a straight A student, I emigrated to this country, and I did a whole load of different things that I'm really proud of. But inside, I still felt like, still not really worthy of respect because this thing, I cannot crack it, I can't stop. Why am I disgusting? Why am I eating like this? You know, it got to the point <laughs> where after days of drinking salt water, I was sitting at a table with my sons telling them, it's fine, it's going to lift your legs, while they ate the meal I cooked for them. That's when I realised, now my sons are 11 and 13, and they're watching their mother, who's trying to portray this, you know, being a good mom, and I'm showing them what their husband must be like, while they sip my salt water for three days, and turn into a bitch mom of the world, <laughs> grumpy, no energy, miserable, and obsessed with food. Like, if there's wrong ways to get obsessed with food is not to have me. <laughs> and just finally realised that something had to change, and that thing didn't need to be the number on the scale. That number on the scale should not be the most important thing in my life. Because of that number on the scale, I wasn't showing up in the world in the way that I wanted to. I wasn't enjoying myself. I went to a party. Tell me the struggle of what on earth am I going to wear? I became very good at concealing my lumps and bumps and, you know, then maybe I wouldn't want to sit down in this dress. I'm just going to stand in the corner. Hi! Who put that there? <laughs> <laughs> that means. You walk into a party and you're, con you're comparing yourself. Oh my gosh, she looks amazing. Oh my gosh, she is way better than me. You know, and you're no longer looking for friends. You're not making connections. You're, you're setting up a little hierarchy where you're at the bottom. No? Quickly working out the macros in that campaign. Have I heard those? No. No? You're no longer having fun. You're not showing up in life. And that is why I knew that I needed to make a change. And that's what I want to help you do today. To change how you feel about yourself. Because what is body image? This buzzword that we've all heard. It's a very buzzword at the moment. Body image is actually not just your body. It's what you think about your body. It's, the, what, it's one of the thoughts and perceptions and beliefs and stories that you have about your body. When you look in the mirror, it's the fact that all those things that you say to yourself, or the thing you zoom in on and think, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's how you start to value yourself based on what you see in the mirror, what you think people see when they look at you. And that is why it's a problem. Because you're not enjoying your life. You're not getting the most out of it. You're not bringing your whole self into your life. You're just trying to look a certain way. And it doesn't have to be your weight. You might have a different thing. It might be your hair. It might be a scar. It could be anything. You've got your own thing, your own body image thing, your own story that you tell yourself about that. So my first top tip is that most people won't notice. Most people won't care. The majority. <laughs> Some people might care, but yeah, whatever. 
whatever. Regardless, it doesn't say who you are. So I said I've got three tools for you. Three of my favorite tools. And I know it's hard to take notes as you're sitting here. I made a page for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to my website, shameless, okay, it's for you. It's lisawelch.com forward slash KZN Meetup. You'll find the tools. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have it now and I'll put my stories if anyone Thank you. Back. Thank you. Okay, so there's four tools. I'm 
just want you to remember to have compassion, and this is how you can have compassion with yourself right now. You can understand that we are in a society that teaches us that we are only worth what we look like, but it's not true. The reason we're told that is because it makes a profit for a lot of people. If we really felt comfortable in our skin, how many businesses would have to close their doors? So here's the tool. You need a cell phone, some privacy, and some headphones, okay? And I want you to take some time with your voice recorder on your phone to imagine that you're talking to baby you, okay? And you're gonna hit record, and you're going to talk to baby you. You can create on you if you want. And I want you to tell baby you how you feel about them. You know, you're gonna say, you are so cute. You are such a blessing. We are so lucky that you're here on this planet. And we are so excited by what you're going to achieve. You're perfect. And that funny little dimple, oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Everything about you is wonderful and you are magnificent. Okay, and you say your words, whatever you feel, okay? And then press pause. And we're gonna fast forward to teenage I'm going to stand in front of teenage you, record. Hey, teenage you. Ooh, teenage me. Shush, that's a big old movie. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to say what you want to say to teenage you, okay? But things are really confusing right now. You don't know where you're going. But you're going to do so well. Trust yourself because you're going to be so proud of what you're going to achieve. And I know that you don't I know where you fit in. I know you don't know your style. Maybe you won't ever know your style, that's okay. I know you've got some hairs coming in random places, but you know what? I'm so proud of what you're going to get through, so just have faith in yourself, because you're going to make, make yourself so proud. Okay, so press pause. Skip forward to now, this is the toughest one. So you're going to speak to yourself right now, and tell yourself, firstly, an apology of how you may be mistreated, misspoken about yourself, how you have devalued yourself, how you have not respected yourself, and you're going to apologize, and then you're going to make a promise and a commitment, and promise to take care of his body. Okay, so, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry that I restricted your food, and I starved you, and I called you fat, and I poked your squashy bits, and I laughed at you, and I hid you, and I missed so many opportunities because I was ashamed of you. I'm so sorry. I promise, it doesn't matter what your butt looks like, I promise, I'm going to learn to take care of you. I am going to take care of you, I'm going to nourish you, I'm going to give you the sleep you need, I'm going to give you the food you need, I'm going to move you more. I'm going to love you, because you deserve it. Okay, and then you're going to press stop. <laughs> and then you make a dry eye. <laughs> and what you're going to do with this recording, which is you talking to you, with your truth, going to play it to yourself every single day for seven days straight and see how that feels. Now, you might not be at the place where you can record those messages without feeling weird. You might feel like you're not telling the truth. You might feel fake. And if that's the case, then you're going to keep practicing for seven days until you get it right. There's no wrong or right way. This could be three minutes long. It could be 15 minutes long. So you're recording to you for your use. And just let me tell you, it sounds like oh, a great idea, but you probably won't do it. Try it. It changes everything. It changes how you show up. And if you can think of body image, if you can think of a negative body image as a cage that you have created, because it's your thoughts, your stories that are trapping you in there, right? If you realize that you are 100% in control of that cage, you actually can get out of it. And these are the tools that will help you to do that, to actually believe that you're worthy, no matter what your body looks like. Because remember that 4% of women, only 4% found themselves beautiful. 80% of women found one another beautiful. And what does that tell you? We are our harshest, harshest critics. So those are my three tools, but I've got a bonus one. <laughs> Number four is for those really tough days, those bad days. When you're just feeling gross, you're feeling fat. You know the days. You don't actually get out of bed, maybe. Maybe you don't know the days, that's good. If you ever have one of those days, this tool is for you. 
when you feel fat. Oh, you don't want to go to the party. You don't want to go for dinner. You don't want to see anyone actually. You don't want to show up like this. I want you to reframe this as imagining you've got this inner mean girl. The inner mean girl from the playground. She wants your attention badly, right? She wants your attention so badly that she's going to pick the most awful thing that society has told you you can be and she's going to throw it in your face. And she's going to make you feel awful, right? That is how badly she wants your attention. But if you can see her as this little mean girl in the playground, say to her, what, what is wrong? Like, what are we feeling, right? Because fat isn't a feeling. Gross isn't a feeling. What are we feeling? And name it. I feel upset. I feel angry, disappointed, ashamed, embarrassed, jealous. You name it. Name that feeling and ask her what she needs. What does she actually need and take care of that need? You can phone your friend or run a bar. There's so many things you can do. Go outside. Maybe you do need to stay in bed for the day. That's okay. Get some rest. We need rest. Sleep is very important. But just realize when you're having those really, really bad days, see it for what it is. It's a red flag that you have a need that you're not addressing. And address it. So those are my tools. Three and a bonus. <laughs> And I just want to invite you, if you are interested in learning anything more about this, I do have a podcast that you're very welcome to find. You can find it on my website. And as a gift for you girls today, ladies, queens, <laughs> um, I have created a course called Food and Body Freedom, which is 10 modules, 7 hours of video instruction activities, guided meditations, and I usually sell it for one and a half thousand rand. And for you ladies, I'm giving you a coupon with 1,250 rand off. <laughs> so that means 250 rand for 10 modules of life-changing content. I really believe that. And the coupon is Hazel and Meetup. Yeah. <laughs> no hashtag. But that's also linked on that page. So that is a gift to you, and also for anybody who feels that this is valuable for their followers, I'm happy to offer discounts, affiliate, etc. Reach out to me, I'm happy to do that. So I just really want to sum up by telling you all that you deserve to feel amazing, and it's within your power. You don't need to focus on changing the exterior, you can change how you feel about yourself right now. And it's the first domino to fall because when you start to feel good about yourself and you start to take care of yourself, automatically things will change. You'll notice that your food choices are more health affirming. You start to move your body more. You start to realize that you're in this feeling amazing body and it's capable of so much that when you're locked down in that body image cage of your own creation, that you can't experience the world that way and you don't make choices from a health affirming place. And this is a difficult, horrible place to be. I've been there for a long time. So I just want to tell you all, you're capable, you can do this, try the tools. Any that didn't resonate with you, ditch them. But if one did, give it a try. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. And thank you all for listening. What is a media kit and what is a brain card? So a media kit is something that tells your um, potential black clients essentially who you are, what you do, what you focus on, that kind of thing. So just an overview about you and your brand as a blogger. Then a raise card is essentially a snapshot of how much you can charge for specific things. So blog posts, Instagram posts, etc. But I'll get more into that just now. But that's the difference between a media kit and a raid card. And I've actually put both of mine into one document just because I find that I don't need to have two separate documents for it. Um, so why they're important is basically if, if a brand contacts you and wants to do some work with you, they want to make sure that you're the right fit for the brand. So now I also have my own marketing company, so I know what it's like to reach out to people that you feel probably has the right fit, but you need to know like, where, where is their audience? So if it's a case and only brand that I'm doing, I want to see what their, their mix is of like, where their followers are from and that kind of thing. So basically, 
a brand can look at a whole bunch of stuff and there are online tools and apps like we were discussing earlier. Um, so there's stuff that I can do from my side, but then I need to know more of the background. So I'll, I'll tell you just now what, we, what you should include in it. Um, but it really is important and it's quite um, overwhelming when you first started and you don't know how much to charge for things. Like you want to be reasonable, you don't want to be charging something more than somebody else who's got a way bigger following. You're kind of just like, I haven't got any idea where to start, especially with a, a rate card. Um, so yeah, that's why they're important. You need to showcase a brand who you are, what you're about, so that they make sure that they've got the right fit. It must be the right fit both from their side and also from your side because your blog is also your brand. You are also your brand and you want to make sure that you work with people who make sense for you. Okay, so for media kits, these are the things that I think are important to include. Um, so first of all, include your bio. So include relevant information, it's not your CV. So include relevant information about who you are, how old you are, um, what are your interests, how long you've been blogging for, what you like blogging about. So like even in mine, I'm like I started out actually doing lots of fashion related stuff. And then after a while, people started asking me beauty questions. So I'm like, well, I also do like beauty, so let me start including that. And now actually, the thing that people are engaging with me the most is on like home day or type of things. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Um, and then also just actually me being myself. So my Instagram stories get way more engagement than even my posts on my feed do. Um, so I've kind of worked out the rates on like how many followers I have versus how many people watch my stories and yeah, it's much better than my feed even, which is also something that brands not going to be able to see, okay? They can't see how many people are watching your stories and sending you DMs and that kind of thing. So that's also something important to keep in mind. Um, then I think, first of all, you should have a logo, as I said, it's your brand. Um, and then also a photo of yourself, I think would be a good addition to your media kit. Not a hundred percent necessary, definitely your logo, but I think a photo of you as well would be something cool. In mine, I've got like a few photos um, on mine that are from my Instagram feed so that uh, the brand can see what kind of photos I do, I do flat nails, etc. And then also like my makeup and you know those kinds of things. So there's where you, you can see me in the photos on my media kit. Um, then what's another important thing is to include in your bio and what your brand's about is like what niche you're in. So I know Shiv asked everyone what niches you um, like to play in. And it's not, it doesn't need to be one important be all and end all type of thing. So I think almost every single one of us here um, will talk about like parenting, for example, with Terry. But then Terry's amazing at doing makeup. So you also talk about makeup and that kind of thing. So you don't have to be specific in your one niche. I know the previous school of thought was that you should focus on one thing only. I just don't think that that's like reasonable now. They're all true. I'm just taking like our favourites and um, James Charles. Yeah, yeah. So it's like James Charles isn't just doing makeup Make in his like Instagram <coughs> content, even his YouTube content is not one specific, he's like diversified for his audience. Yeah, so it is, I think maybe when you start off you're kind of trying to show what you like, what you like more than expert at. at. Mm -hmm experience in but um, as you go forward people are getting to know you through following you so I think that try not to you know cover every single thing under the sun but it, it's you know just think about what your brand is and what you kind of like to talk about and that kind of thing just so that you do have like a point of view for example so like with Dion saying you want to make sure that the brand fit is correct you you need to have that kind of specific areas that you're playing in but you don't have to be like way too disruptive. As I said, use an old school of thoughts, have like one niche and just stick with that. I just don't think it's reasonable anymore to do because we share so much of ourselves online, especially with um, Instagram stories and everything these days. Um, um, okay, then the next important thing you need to do is put um, the number of people who follow you on your different platforms. So we know that numbers are not that important, but it is an important piece of information to put on there. Um, so I don't put an exact number, I say like 4,100 plus, so I've got like a little bit over that. 
Um, so every few months I go and update, I check um, my followers and that kind of thing and update that. And then another thing I do, um, you can also include your engagement rates. It does change, it depends on like what kind of content you're doing, how often you're doing your content, but kind of just be reasonable with giving it like what you think is like your, your blanket kind of engagement rates and that kind of thing. And then also you must put your um, follower demographics in percentages, so that's very important. So that's more important than the number of followers you have. Um, as I said, if I want to um, work with somebody, even if it's so, if you want to work with like a macro follower, so there's um, this one um, guy in Durban who has wears his Gucci and his Louis Vuitton and his Louis Vuitton and etc etc. So I'm like, okay, cool, you've got like a nice decent amount of followers, you do speak about fashion and that kind of thing. But he's got so many international followers. So then me as a brand, it doesn't really make sense for me to work with him so much on something that's very local, if you know what I mean. Like, and that's just an example off the top of my head. Um, I work on two brands that are KZN based only, as I mentioned. So I want to make sure that you've got you know, a nice big, not, not necessarily too big, but like, do you know what I mean? You've got, you've got enough people who are following you that are actually from KZN. Then, um, funny enough, I've got 15% male followers, which I, I thought that I would be over, way more over indexed than female. There you go. Um, so those kind of, that kind of information you need to include as well. And there's multiple areas that you will get that information from. So it's important to go look in your analytics does anyone not have a business profile on Instagram? Does everyone have a business profile or a personal? So for a business profile, that's where you get your insights. So you can actually go on there and see what your split is between male and female, ages, locations, and that kind of thing. Um, then that's, you'd have to look at that. And also like your Facebook, and also on your blog, you, you must definitely have Google Analytics if you um, got a blog, because it also gives you some demographic information there. And then I try to kind of put it all together to have an, like an educated guess on like my overall following kind of like where it sits. Um, also because I over index on Instagram, I'll use that as a more like more of my direction with what's going on with my followers. Um, then what I also like to include is um, brands that I've worked with previously. So I just pop in everyone's um, logos. So now, I mean, I've been blogging since 2011, I think. Yeah, so I've worked with tons of brands over time, but I make sure that I, I keep the more relevant ones of, of late, if you know what I mean. Not like someone that I worked with a million years ago when my brand actually was sitting in a different place. So that's an important thing to, to include in there. Also, it will show the potential um, brand or the brand that you potentially will work with, like what kind of brand you work with in that. So something like what Nikki was saying, if you've always focused on um, more budget cosmetics and stuff like that, you're probably not going to go to a Chanel and ask them to, to sponsor you some stuff to try. You know what I mean? It makes sense with what you typically do and who you typically work with. Um, then also ensure that you use your blog's look and feel when you're designing your um, media kit. So I've made sure that I use all of my colours, my logos, the right fonts. So it took me a million years to decide what fonts. I just I sit on 1001fonts.com and I scrolled through for a million years to find those fonts, downloaded them to my computer, and I make sure that when I'm doing content and like my collateral, like my media kits and my red card, that I use all the same look and feel. And then as I said, I put some of my Instagram shots in my design of my media kit to show what my content is. Chances are the brand's probably going to click through on your links because obviously you'll put your links to all of your social media and your blog and that kind of thing in there as well. Um, then some people um, don't like including their Google Analytics stats for their blog for everyone to see. So then you could always say like, let me know if you want to see um, more specific detail onto your Google Analytics and that kind of thing. Um, then as I said, I include my rate card in my media kit. So there's a couple of ways that I've figured out how to um, how to find that information. But I just wanted to say up front. So lots of people, lots of bloggers are saying, don't do anything for free. You're messing it up for the rest of us. We've been working for longer, etc., etc. So whilst I do completely respect that, I really do find 
um, a lot of merit, especially when you started to accept trade exchanges. Um, so some of them are going to be smaller, some of the bigger ones then I definitely would never expect to be paid for that if I'm getting spoiled, um, you know, for a certain campaign or something like that. But um, I think it's a great way to to showcase to a brand that you want to work with them, that you are willing to create beautiful content for them and that kind of thing. Um, so I know quite a few bloggers who have done tons of work on trade exchange stuff, brought up beautiful content, videos, photos and that kind of thing, and other blogs paying them to create content for them, not just like for their own blog. Like they've really, they've showcased their, their work and the fact that they love the brand and want to talk about the brand. So I'm not going to negate doing trade exchanges, do it when it's fair for everyone. Um, but then when it comes to getting paid, um, I, I usually work on two different websites to kind of see um, how much I think I should charge for things. So what's nice about these websites, the one's called Four, F-O-H-R, and the other one's Webfluential. I'm sure you would have heard about Webfluential before, right? Okay, cool. So what's nice about them is that you input all of your details onto it, um, they link into your Instagram, you know, when you give like your authorised access and stuff like that, and then it pops out a number that they think that you should charge for your certain um, platforms. Um, so the full one is international, so they, they'll say in dollars, um, just work out kind of what the exchange rate is. But then what I do is I use both of them and I look at what I do and how much they suggest and I just try to make sure that it's fair and reasonable. So I've actually downed the cost a little bit because I'm like, I don't actually think that that's, that is a fair amount of money almost. You don't want to outprice yourself, right? Then you're never going to get any work with anyone. So yeah, I definitely think, figure out what's fair. Um, I also have like a little package on my rate card that says a blog post plus Instagram plus Facebook etc will cost this much. But then I also have a little asterisk and I say, let me know what you would like and I'll put something together for you. So it's not like you're going to charge, okay, you want three Instagram posts, so therefore this times three equals this. Do you know what I mean? You put something together that makes sense for everything that you need to do, what's fair for the brand, what's fair for you. Um, Yes, so um, I have also just put a note, don't charge too high, especially if you're new. Be fair to everyone. Try also not charge too low. Try respect that everyone, you know, is we, this is a business at the end of the day. So whilst it's important to do trade exchange kind of things to make those um, partnerships and that kind of thing, also know your worth. 